hello, 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 hello to all of you guys out there in the internet land. Uh, what's up? My name is Jared, and I'm here with Heat Press Nation for another episode of Heat Press Nation Live. Yes, we are live streaming right now. If you're watching the replay, well, thank you for watching. But if you're watching me live right now, do me a favor. Shout out where you're tuning in from. We have everybody in the comments right here. Just, I don't know. I love seeing where everybody's coming in from. I, th I think it's always fun. But yeah, let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, if you have any questions at all throughout the live, of course, feel free to drop it in the comments. We have not only me monitoring the comments, but we do have my pal Ronnie. Uh, she's in the comments as well. So if you need like a link to any of the products we're using today, actually, if you need a link to what I'm showing off today, you can go to heat.press slash live. But if you have questions about other stuff, she's in there to help. So yeah, let me know where you're... Uh... I know there's like a, a delay on there, so... Here we go. Oh, there we go. Now the comments are coming in. We got Sable from Ohio. Carrie also joining in from Ohio. Will Jean from Indiana. We got Claudia from Houston. Lance from Anaheim. Hey, just down the freeway. Nice, nice. Got Angela from Texas. Mike from Durham, North Carolina. Tyra from Indiana. Lori tuning in from the Philly suburbs. What's up? And okay, now all of them are coming in here. I see, uh, let's see, Roberto72 from Riverside. Uh, let's see who else do we got. We got Ian Tebbets from Austin. What is up, everybody? It's so good to have you guys joining us for this week's live episode. By the way, if you're just tuning in, I am going to be talking about pre-orders and how they can help your business. Pre-orders are something that I have used a lot personally. I'm excited to talk about it. Um, but let's see, where's everybody tuning in from? Michelle, Serena coming in from Houston. Very cool. Very cool. What's up, everybody? Alice from Alabama. Nice. Again, you got any questions at all, drop it in the comments below. Before I go any further, I got to stop myself and remind you that right here. Oh, I did it. Right side. Yes. We have a flash sale running right now. Now, what's a flash sale? It's over in a flash. So right now, if uh, you use the code Caesar, Lo oh, I have it written here. Caesar Love, you could take 10% off of all Caesar Heat Transfer Vinyl. Not going to be valid for the cutting machines for the vinyl. So 10% off your vinyl, use the code CESARLOVE right here. It's gonna take 10% off of all the vinyl uh, on our site right now, and it already ships for free. So now is a good time. If you've been thinking that you need to stock up on some vinyl, use this code CESARLOVE. Take 10% off of your vinyl. Uh, yeah, all your vinyl orders. Now, I said it's a flash sale. It's over in a flash, and uh, it, this is a little bit longer than a flash. Um, but we do end this broadcast. Typically, I'm live for about 40 to 50 minutes or so. So it's 103. Siri, be quiet. It's 104. Sorry, my time right now. So roughly about 145. Better have your orders in because as soon as I'm done with this live stream, this code goes kaput. It's no longer valid. So you want to make sure that you use this code before, before. I am done here. And honestly, this code, um, we have new ones every week. So if you're a regular here on Heat Press Nation Live, you know that every week I got a new code for you. And we do this because we love our viewers. We love rewarding everybody who joins us live. So it's a good incentive to come by. If for anything, get your weekly code. And again, this code is only valid while we are streaming live. By the way, at the end of today, I do have a giveaway for you, one lucky live viewer is gonna win a Caesar Heat Transfer Vinyl Variety Pack, uh, which is gonna be a $50 value. By the way, uh, make sure that you send a text. The number is gonna pop up on your screen in a minute. If you wanna be notified every time we have something cool to offer you, right, right there. This, we, we got a new number, by the way. I haven't memorized it yet, but I know you're seeing it on your screen right about there. Uh, so you can text the word HEAT to this number right here. You're gonna have to read it. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Here we go. Yeah, so text to join every time we have a new sale, a very special live event, or other special thing that we feel that our subscribers need to know, we're gonna drop it to all of our tech subscribers. And our tech subscribers are always the first to know when we have big things going on. I'm talking sales, discounts, promos, et cetera. It's funny, some people say it et cetera, but it's actually et. I learned that very recently. Okay, I'm gonna be talking about pre-orders in just a moment. 
Uh, but we're gonna check back in. What's up, everybody? Oh, Nally from Kenosha. Raymond from Phoenix. We got Cindy from Indianapolis. We got Angel saying hello. Well, hello back to you. And let's see who else we got tuning in here. Oh, so many, too many comments. What's up, everybody? Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Kirsten's coming in from San Francisco Bay. We got Michelle from Miami. Lisa from North Carolina. What? We're international today because we have Mary Helen Hughes coming in from Manai, Manai, Australia. What is up, mate? Good to see you. You're good coming in from Myrtle Beach. Everybody's tuning in today. So exciting. All right. So today we're going to be talking about something that I feel is not used enough. Uh, it's a tool. Now, this is not the end all. I don't want everybody switching all of your products to pre-sale. This is not the end all solution for everybody. But today I am going to be talking about pre-sale. I do have some points that I want to share with you guys today because I think if you haven't used pre-sale before, it may not be for you. There's a small chance you might hear all of this and you might think, okay, I don't like pre-sale. But I think there's enough of you out there that are really going to benefit from not every product. Again, this is not the end all, but I think you're going to find some situations where incorporating a pre-sale will be helpful to you. So the first thing that pre-sale does is it does help you to increase your sales. Yeah. Who doesn't want to make money, right? I mean, I know some of you guys are hobbyists, which is awesome. Um, but me, t-shirting is a hobby, but it also is a business for me. It's one of those weird things where uh, millennials like to monetize their hobbies. Anyways, um, if your product is unavailable or out of stock, shoppers may move on to the next store. That's just a fact. They, they come to your website and they came for a t-shirt that they saw on Instagram, but you're sold out. It's a popular product and you haven't had a chance to restock you're gonna be restocked in about a week or two, maybe three, but you don't have any yet. Uh, you don't wanna turn people away empty handed. Um, so, having a pre sale option, what is a pre sale? The item that you have that's out of stock. Instead of just having it out of stock where people can't add it to their cart, what you do is you turn it, and I'm gonna talk about that right now, you turn it into a pre sale. Now, there's a couple things you don't wanna miss. The title of your product should be changed to include the words pre-sale before they read anything else. It should say pre-sale. You don't want to mislead anybody. You don't want anyone to feel misled, even if it's not intentional. You want to change the title to pre-sale. In the product description, make sure the first thing they read is not, you know, your, a description of the item. It is pre-sale. Pre-sale. You cannot. You cannot uh, let that be inconspicuous. It has to be very um, flagrant, like a flagrant foul, right? It has to be very just um, explicit, just in their face. Let them know it's a pre-sale. Okay, now that we got out of that out of the way, um, you're going to change the title to pre-sale. You're also going to include an estimated delivery date. So if people are pre-saling things, let them know, hey, this is going to ship at the end of March. This is going to ship at the end of February you have to include your estimated timeline. If you don't know when you're gonna restock this item, don't do a pre-sale. Do not do a pre-sale. You can only pre-sale when you have a solid estimate when you will ship it. Not when you're gonna get your shipment and then pack it. No, when will you ship it? If you know when you're gonna get your next shipment and when you'll be sending those to your customers, then you could do a pre-sale. Okay, so what's cool about pre-sales, you don't have to say no to your customers. They want that t-shirt. You know you're going to be able to ship it out in three weeks. Pre-sale. Offer your customers a pre-sale because it allows you to capture the customer up front. You can capture that money up front and you'll just fulfill it at a later time. I think the most important thing is not so much just getting their money, which is important. It's you're keeping that customer. You're not sending away the customer. Um, it also helps you to be ready to sell even if you're not ready to ship, which is pretty solid. Um, also, another cool thing about pre-sale is, and this is more if you're owning, if you have your own brand. Uh, I have my own brand, which I'm wearing today. Shameless plug. All right, had to show that off. Uh, I've done pre-sale before. Um, it gives you insights by providing data uh, about your true demand. Now, I've done this where I have a dope design, or I should say, I think it's dope. I think it's really cool, 
and I, I pre-order. So from a screen printer, or I'll just go into production, even if it's vinyl, I'll make like 48, four dozen, um, I'll make like uh, five dozen, 60. I'll make a bunch of shirts, and then, and then I'll offer it for sale, and it just doesn't hit. People just don't want it. I think it's cool. My, my customers think it's ugly. So now I'm sitting on a ton of inventory. What pre-sale does is it helps you understand what your customers prefer. Do they want this color, that color? Because your orders are coming in in advance, you could then, after you collect all the orders, you could then just order as many t-shirts as you need. Not as many as you think you'll need, as many as you actually need. So it's really good for helping to gauge customer demand, what products they think are gonna be cool. One cool tactic that you could do is you could offer pre-sale for a certain graphic and then offer it in like three different colorways. Popular colors that you think are cool, offer it, put it on pre-sale for about three weeks, and then at the end of those three weeks, see which one has more orders. That's the one that after you fulfill all of your pre-sale orders, that's the color that you're gonna restock. By the way, I do wanna let you guys know, we have a giveaway, I'm gonna pause real quick, right here, right here. You see this code? Take 10% off of all your Caesar orders, I have a giveaway right here at the end of this um, presentation. I only have like a few more points to get through. Be really quick. We're talking about pre-sales today. And I have a really cool demo. Actually, let's go ahead and show them what we're doing here. I have a really cool demo that I'm gonna be showing you guys in just a minute. This is an example of something that I would not stock. And I'll tell you why. Specialty vinyl, this is, uh, this is gonna be Caesar um, Electric, Easy Weed Electric Red. And this is Craft Pro Puff Pink. These are two specialty vinyls. I'm not trying to have a lot of rolls of them in my shop. Oh, and then we have Puff in red as well. We have Bubblegum Pink back here. We have Caesar Brick in red back here. So this shirt is a texturing dream. People are gonna see this, feel this. They're gonna love this. However, this is one, two, three. Sorry. four or five. This is five different types of vinyl. I do not want to stock full rolls of five different types of vinyl, especially if I don't know if I'm going to get a lot of orders from it. So this is a, this is a great example. And I'm going to be doing this on a t-shirt because we don't have a lot of spare hoodies here. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this on a t-shirt right now. Um, but this is a prime example of something that I would pre-sale first. I don't want to stock that because there's a lot of vinyl that goes into that hoodie. Um, and if I have to stock a ton of those, I'm gonna have to raise the price pretty high on those hoodies just to make sure that I recoup my investment on there. But if I'm pre-selling, I know exactly how much vinyl to get and I don't have to price as high. Okay, really quick and then we're gonna get into our demos. Um, one, of the other, one of the final benefits of pre-orders is that it creates excitement and buzz around your company, around your product before you've actually launched. It's kind of like a trailer uh, before the film gets released. You can, you can even, and what's really helpful is you could use the profits from your pre-sale to fund your stocked order. So if your pre-sale does really well, just take that money, roll it into a larger production run that you will keep in stock. And uh, yeah, you're covered. I absolutely love pre-sale. Um, there's different ways of doing this. Um, you have the pay now or the pay later option. Personally, I do pay now with a set ship date. Pay now with a set ship date because the problem that I personally have run into is if you pay later, that means that they, they place the pre-order but their card doesn't get charged until the order ships. What happens is people forget they bought from you and then you charge them for like a $45 hoodie and then they're at a restaurant that night when the charge goes through and then their card gets declined in front of their date because they forgot that they had pre-ordered your hoodie. Um, it is, you're gonna get more pre-orders that way. Um, you know, uh, you know your customers better than I do. If you think your customers are gonna get overdrawn for 45 bucks, <laughs> that's up to you. That's totally up to you. I'm gonna pause real quick, take some questions and then I have like two more points and then we're gonna get into our demo for today, by the way. I have my trusty HPN Signature Pro 15 by 15 inch swing away heat press that we're using today. Super excited, I haven't used this one in a while. Um, so I'm pretty stoked. All the different heat presses, they're not like my babies, but they are my homies. And I haven't seen this homie in a while, so we're gonna get reacquainted right now. 
and have some fun. Daisy, Daisy's Day says, uh, do I give a close date for taking pre-orders? Usually, yes. Usually, yes. If, only because, like, if, if it's, how do I put this? Like, you don't want your pre-orders rolling into your full orders. If it is going to be, be a pre-order, you have to let them know it's going to be a pre-order. Um, so now after a certain point, you're going to get your pre-orders, stock up your inventory with that money, and then you could offer it as an inventory product later on. Those don't be, but there should be a, a difference. If someone's going to, if it's going to ship right away, basically, you don't have to put it in the title pre-order. But if it's not going to ship right away, you must disclose that to your customer. And so it's, so the people right in between, they're getting it at the end of the pre-order, at the beginning of your inventory orders. Those are a little hairy. I like to have a hard stop. So me personally, I do stop. I do have an end date. Pre-order ends, the end of the month, everything's going to ship the beginning of the next month or something like that. You know, that's usually a good way to run it in my personal experience. Let's see. Um, oh, yes, Michelle Griffin, Ice Bunny Creation says, yes, can you show how the puffy vinyl works? I'm going to show how every last one of these works. Again, we have electric, we have puff, we have, what else do we have on there? Electric puff, we have brick, and regular vinyl on there. So we have a few different types of vinyl. Definitely going to get into that right now. Uh, let's see, let's see. Any other questions here? Ooh, now this is wild. What if the supply chain need, needed is up and doesn't come in when we expected it? That is a great question. In your pre-sale, that's why you're gonna have an estimated shipping date. So be very clear, estimated shipping date. Now, this is why I do, this is actually a good case for ending your pre-sale a little early. So let's say pre-sale ends March 10th. And your estimated shipping date shouldn't be for like two weeks after that. Give yourself enough time to order your blanks, order everything, get everything made, and then ship. If you fulfill sooner, everyone's going to adore you. If you fulfill later, well, be ready for the emails and the DMs, okay? So I would say give yourself a nice buffer between the end of your pre-sale period and your estimated ship date. I know poop happens. If, if something happens and you can't make your estimated ship date, let your customers know a few days before or as early as possible, like, hey, our estimated ship date was April 1st. Due to supply chain issues, we're going to be pushing that to April 8th, but I'm going to give everybody a free sticker or 10% off their next order. There's definitely ways to keep your customers, keep them happy, even when it comes to delays like that. It's a great question. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see, let's see. I, you, you know, it looks like you guys are pumped for the, uh, to, uh, for the demo, so I'm going to hop over to that right now. Actually, let's go ahead. I'm going to save these final points for the end. We're going to get on over to our demonstration. And by the way, keep the questions coming, ladies and gentlemen. I have a... Yeah, I, I'm ready to go. Okay, so this is a hoodie. Now, I do not like keeping hoodies in stock because they're expensive. Even the cheap, well, I don't like using the cheapest, cheapest hoodies because they, they just like, uh, I, I don't like the quality of the material. So the hoodies I get, I'm paying roughly $17 to $22 a piece, depending on what my customer wants, et cetera. But hoodies, I don't like keeping a large stock of hoodies, so I'm a big fan of pre-sale. Now this hoodie, we have Puff, we have Electric, we have, on the back, we have regular, more puff, and brick. I really, the, and these colors are not, well, red I, I do use decently enough, but this pink is not a very common color. This is not a color, and this red electric, these are not things that I stock year-round. I really don't. And I really, if, if I did start offering this thing, I really don't want a lot of extra vinyl sitting around because that's money that I've spent that I'm not recouping. So this is a great example of something, uh, especially because it, it is kind of Valentine's themed here, and I know Valentine's is already coming up. It's probably a little bit late if you're barely getting started, but you know this is an example for future holidays that you could do. This is something that I would start pre-sailing in January. 
in January. Now, in the event that it takes off and it's really cool and people keep ordering this past, yeah, I'll keep stocking it, sure. But this is something that I would for sure pre-sale. I do not want 50 or 100 or, hey, 500. I don't want 500 of these hoodies in my garage. I really, really don't because that is thousands and thousands of dollars of inventory just sitting that I'll eventually donate to Goodwill because I'm just so angry of seeing a big stock of stuff that didn't sell. So you guys want to see the tutorials. We don't have a ton of hoodies laying around, but I am going to show you how we do it on this t-shirt. Now, before we move on, I just want to show you guys really quick layering. So when you're layering multicolor designs, especially if you're new and you've never layered anything before, you have to cut everything one at a time. So in this case, we have our, this is our, uh, and this is not Puff, I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier. This is a Strip Block Pro. These are Easy Weed Electric, you know, and then on the back we have Standard Easy Weed, then we have our Puff, and then we have our Brick. Uh, when you're layering designs of different types and styles, you're gonna wanna heat press it with the uh, more sensitive, uh, more sensitive vinyls going last. So the Easy Weed Electric, that's a pretty resilient vinyl. That's gonna go first. Uh, the Strip Flock Pro is gonna go second on the front. And then on the back, that's where things do get a little gnarly because we got brick. Let me bring this over, I'm sorry. We got regular vinyl, right? And then we have our puff. We have our Craft Pro Puff. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, this is Caesar Puff. Easy Puff, sorry. Uh, and so, yeah. So that's a lot going on. The Puff is the most sensitive of these three. Um, so I'm going to go regular Easy Weed first, and then Brick, and then the last one. Again, the most sensitive vinyl is going to go last. So let's hope I don't mess this up, and uh, let's head on over to the heat press. Okay, so again, I have my signature series 15 by 15 here i'm just going to give it a little quick smashy smash make sure my temperature is good i do need a little bit higher than that for a vinyl now i'm not looking for a heavy pressure just a nice medium firm that i think is going to work if you know us here you know that we are fans of the paper pressure test now i don't have paper but i do have my non-stick sheet here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick it in a few inches i'm going to clamp it and now i'm going to try to pull it and you see how that's stuck? Now I know my pressure is gonna be good for my heat press. If I were to loosen it up a little bit, oops, there we go. It's gonna slip out a little bit. Even, even if I can get it just a little bit, you see that? Even if it's moving just a little bit, that's still too much for me. You don't want your, your uh, when you're doing the paper pressure test, you don't want it to slip even a little bit. It has to be stuck, and that's how you know you have a good pressure for your products. So helpful pro-grade non-stick sheet here. Now, I do have, we are gonna press the front of this first. Okay, so I'm gonna center this here. You're gonna center the shirt on the heat press. I'm gonna give it a real quick uh, little pre-press here. Now, for your pre-press, you don't have to have it like, um, you don't have to like mash it. You're just gonna let the platen just sit on there for a couple seconds. That's nice. Now on the front, where are my graphics on the front? Here we are. So now one thing I will do is, I'm not gonna set this down just yet. Oh, here we go, love more where we less. I'm not gonna set this down just yet. I'm just gonna use it to kind of give me an example of where the center is going. Cause remember I'm pressing my electric first. Um, so that's right about it. So now, now I'm just going to center this, make sure it's straight. I'm going to use the hand method, of course. If you guys have like a T squared or something like that, you'll want to use that. I'm using the hand method just because I'm live and we have a time limit. Oh, by the way, speaking of time limits, this code that you see on the top right corner of your screen, 10% off of all Caesar products with Caesar Love, that code is only valid while I'm live. So as soon as this episode's over, uh, that code goes kaput. So if you want to save money, you want to stock up on, stock up on vinyl, Caesar vinyl, use this code, get 10% off. It's all going to ship for free to the lower 48 states. Uh, and then uh, I do have a giveaway. 
One lucky winner is going to win a free Caesar sample pack at the end of this broadcast. Okay, now there are different time and temperature settings for this vinyl. I don't have time to switch between all of them. But the good thing is that Caesar, you know, as long as you're in the range, you're pretty good. So electric typically presses at 305 degrees for 15 seconds. I'm at 314 right now. So I'm going to change my timer to 12 seconds. And we're going to be good. So here we go. This is the exciting part. We watch a press press. Yay. So exciting. Don't worry. I'm going to take your guys' Q&A right now. And that's time. Caesar Easy Weed Electric is a warm peel. Now, one thing you want to remember when you're peeling is it's best to peel, just roll it back. You don't ever want to lift up and away. That's just a surefire way of messing up your transfer. Okay, and now while it's there, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to move anything. Now I can get my, this is Caesar Strip Flock Pro. And now here's the thing about layering vinyl. You have to do it by eye. You have to just visually line it up and you only get one shot. Now that does look pretty good. I'm going to be honest. I've pressed literally thousands and thousands of things in my life. I think I'm okay at centering by eye right now. If you need to pull out your ruler, there's no shame. There's no shame in the ruler or the yardstick or t square it game. This is uh, Caesar Strip Flock Pro. Now this goes at 311 for 15 seconds. Uh, and I'm actually, the press is at 311 right now. I'm gonna take it back up to 15 seconds and we're gonna press. Now the good thing about this, all of these Caesar products, they do have the same pressure setting. So it's gonna be a nice medium pressure. Um, they all do range. Um, between 305 and 311. The Easy Puff does have a lower application temperature, which I'm gonna talk about later, which is also why it's going last. Now, Caesar Strip Flock Pro is a warm peel, so you don't wanna let it be too, too hot, but it is gonna be okay if you peel it warm. So I'm gonna give that about another couple seconds. Again, not super, super hot. Should be okay now, let's see. And I'm just gonna roll it off. I'm not going to lift up and away. I'm just going to roll it off in a nice smooth motion. Doggone. Look, I'm going to be honest. This shirt is already super sick as it is. How do we get that? You see how that reflection on the Caesar red metallic? Now this pink, it is looking not as pink because it's in direct light, but this pink looks cool and it's Caesar Strip Flock Pro. I'm going to show everything off to you after this. Let's get to the back of this shirt. So now I'm going to flip it over. And you might be wondering, is it safe, even though I have things on the front of the shirt, to repress it from the back? Yeah, it actually is going to be safe. Our front graphic is not going to be negatively affected in any way. Now, if we were doing, like, what you don't want to do is keep layering and pressing for, like, a minute or 30 seconds. Um, but, yeah, this is going to be really nice. Now, for my next trick, we have... Three different things. Now, this is going to be interesting because I'm on a 15 by 15 inch press, but it's not, well, I guess it will fit in the 15 by 15 area if I really want it to. You know, I, and I kind of do really want it to. So, first things first, I'm going to get my, this is regular Easy Weed now. I believe this is bubblegum pink. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to make sure it's straight. I'm going to pull it over just a little bit to the right here. That looks about right. That's looking pretty good. Cover with my ProGrade. Now, when you're, I made this mistake on the other side. Um, when you're using things like EasyWeed, you only have an EasyWeed Electric, you only have to tack, if you're layering, you only have to tack the first couple layers down for a couple seconds. So for this one, I'm only going to press it for like five seconds. Now, if you have a good heat press like this, you could technically get away with like two or three seconds, which is actually what I just did. And let's see if that worked. <laughs> yeah, it did. Did you see how quick I stamped it? Like that was only about two seconds. And the vinyl. Now I wouldn't sell this as is because you know you want to give it its best possible press. I, I, I if I was gonna if this was the only thing I was pressing, I would of course press it for the full ten to fifteen. 
But because it's not, I'm okay with just a couple seconds. Okay. So now we have our Caesar brick. And again, kind of going back to, to why we do what we do, your most resilient vinyl or the easiest to press, that's gonna go first. Um, because brick has a different uh, temperature setting and it's thicker. I know it's not much thicker than Easyweed, but because it is thicker, I do want it to get its own separate press. I don't want it to, I don't want it to be negatively affected by my peel settings for this. Also, Caesar Brick is a cold peel. So by the way, this is Caesar Brick 600. And what's cool about this is it doesn't have to be like perfect. That's kind of the design. So my brain wants to make it perfectly straight, but actually like it can go, I mean, that's like the cool part about this graphic. So I'm gonna cover everything again with my ProGrade non-stick sheet. I'm gonna press it. Now Caesar Brick, uh, the temperature is 311 for 20 seconds. So we're gonna just up our timer to 20 seconds and we're gonna press. Let me grab the iPad really quick, see if we have any questions here. I see Ronnie actually going ham in, say I got my iPad right here. She's going ham on the responses. Thank you so much, by the way. Uh, Michelle is asking, do we have this design for sale? Unfortunately not, I'm so sorry. A lot of times what you're seeing here, now this week, I don't know if this is original or if this is a, um, purchase graphic, but most of what you see on, on our live streams are graphics that were purchased uh, from like Shutterstock usually. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this over carefully and I believe uh, we have the overhead, I think. Yeah, here we go. So now, because Caesar Brick is a cold peel, this is the only part of the process that's kind of like eh. You have to wait for that to cool down for a second. So. Uh, what we do is this tabletop is actually pretty cold. So I'll just move it every couple of seconds to a new cold spot on my table. And that's going to help. Another good thing that you could do is you could lay it down carefully, face down on the different cold place of your counter. If you have a granite countertop at your house, that is a great place uh, to cool down your hot transfers. Okay, actually, while it's cooling down, I could talk about this. So on the, on the front side, I actually could have pressed the red face for only a couple seconds. Uh, just pretty much tack it in place and then it would have gotten its full press when I did the Strip Flock Pro. Let's see. It's still a little warm. I'm gonna move it over just a hair. Let me get to some questions here. Jane's saying, how would you press if the design was bigger in the press? If you're using vinyl, you could press it in sections. So um, let's just say, right? I have a 15 by 15, and let's say this square was, this took up like 14 inches, right? It doesn't, but let's say it did, and the love you didn't fit. Um, I would have to press this top part first, and then I would reposition it and just press the love you part. Another thing you could do is when you move it, I would also put a T pad it right under the love you, so that way I don't repress this. Even though you can repress things when you're layering, if you don't have to, don't. Um, so I don't have a T-pad, so everything's gonna get repressed today. But yeah, you just press it in sections. The one thing I don't recommend pressing in sections is sublimation because you could almost always see the line where a certain part got pressed twice in the overlap. The overlap always exposes you. Some people are able to do that, and I have no, I mean, I know how they do it, but I don't know how they do it. It's very difficult. So I have not had good success with that. That's why you don't really see us doing that here. If you figure out how to layer, how to do your sublimation transfers in sections, like go for it, go for it. I, and I'm honest, I'm not being sarcastic. I really mean that. I just haven't figured out how to do it. So you'll, you're not gonna see me showing that process off live. I think we're good to peel. Uh, Debbie's asking, do I know what a cold peel and a hot peel? Yeah, so the instructions, that's a great question. If you don't, what I mean by cold and hot peel is, you saw how I peeled this part, and these parts right on the press. So they were still hot when I peeled off the plastic. Now the plastic for this love you section, it's cold now. So uh, I have to, I, now I'm gonna peel it. The reason for that is the, the plastic, it's stuck to the vinyl, right? 
some materials, and it varies from material, some materials, the bond between the plastic and the, vi and the vinyl is so strong that if you peel it while it's hot, the adhesive hasn't cured yet on the shirt, so you're going to lift up your vinyl letters with it. Um, it's not the case for all vinyl, but for Caesar Brick it is. So with Caesar Brick, you have to let um, the adhesive cool down so it could cure on the garment. So now when I separate the, ad the uh, clear plastic from my vinyl, it will separate clean and without issue. I do like, you notice how I'm kind of walking along with my fingers? I'm rolling it back, but I don't want it to lift too high. Look at that. Look at how doggone cool that is. You think this looks cool. It's very tactile. It feels fantastic. Uh, Belinda's asking, do I protect the first pressing? Yes. So that's why, and I, I don't, and I'm not sure if there's a delay on these questions, but I'll answer it anyways. That's why you see me cover the whole thing with the ProGrade non-thick sheet, that brown little plasticky Teflon paper. And I'm actually, let's go back to the press because I'm actually going to do this right now, the final press. So now I'm going to put this back on here. All right. Now, nor I, I should probably let the love you hang off. It doesn't need to get pressed again. So because it doesn't need to get pressed again, I'm not going to do it. I could, it won't harm it, but what the heck, right? Why take a uh, risk? Oh, actually, no, no, I won't. Because now I have another problem. The collar, you, okay, more than I want this to hang off the edge, I need my collar to hang off the edge. So sorry, I lied. Let's put that back. I'd rather have the collar hang off the edge. I don't want to press my collar. So now, one thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the temperature of our heat press down all the way to 280. Give me a second. There we go. 280 and 15 seconds. Let me change my time. Okay, so we're going to have the press sit here. I'm going to have my press cool down, which means uh, time for a couple more questions. Okay, so I, I'm here, guys. Don't worry. I'm right here. By the way, uh, be sure you use this code soon because we're going to be wrapping this episode in just a couple minutes. I do have a giveaway coming up. We're about to finish this demo here, um, and I have a giveaway. So once this live stream is over, that code is no longer valid. So drop it in your carts. Go stock up on some Caesar vinyl, and let's see that. All righty, so let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, Catherine is asking, is that the stretch vinyl? No, so we're not using stretch today. We're using standard. Well, the checkers are standard Easyweed. This is uh, Caesar Brick. And then on the front, which actually I'll show you a sample from our hoodie. On the front, this is our Strip Flock Pro, which has a really nice, you can't see it, but it has a really nice velvety satin texture. And then this is like a semi-reflective kind of metallic vinyl. This is Caesar Easyweed Electric. So we got five different types of vinyl going today. This final piece that I'm about to do is puff, puff vinyl. And uh, it's really cool. It just has a lower temperature, which is why it's going last. Which, you know, so if I were to put the puff on first, then when I add this layer, I'd have to press the puff again. When I add this layer, I'd press the puff again, and I don't want to do that. Puff is the most sensitive. So it goes last. That way, I only have to give it one single heat press. Okay, let's see, let's see, any questions? Jane is asking, what substrates can this be done on? So this is vinyl. This is a very resilient product. You could put this on t-shirts, hoodies, actually just, I mean, just today you're seeing it on a t-shirt. We originally did this graphic on a super cool hoodie, uh, but really vinyl can go on like sweat, pretty much any material. I mean, as long as it could be heat pressed, you could do it. So we've seen it on sweatpants, leggings, uh, hats, Jackets, um, so many clothes items. I don't know why I'm blanking on <laughs> on I'm thinking of things that I have in my closet. But yeah, if you could fit it on a heat press and it's a it's like a cloth garment, you could very likely heat press. There are some materials like rayon and um, rayon and spandex that are a little heat sensitive. Some polyesters are also heat sensitive, so you want to just keep that in mind. Do a test press before you offer something for sale, of course. Make sure it's going to hold up after you wash it. But yeah, in general, I mean, me personally, for my own t-shirt brand, I use 100% cotton. I know for a fact that's going to work amazing with heat transfer vinyl. 
Uh, questions about the giveaway? We're, it's gonna be live, so I'm gonna we're gonna have a live giveaway, and I'm gonna show you how you can enter in just a few minutes. I'm waiting for this press to get down to 280, um, so that way I could uh, press my puff vinyl and show you guys everything. So I have a couple questions right now. Uh, Denise is saying, can't you use a cooling stone to cool down the vinyl? Yes, you can. Uh, honestly, if you have something cold and flat to put the vinyl on, go for it. Great way to cool down your vinyl. Uh, Michelle saying her puff vinyl is not working with the code. Okay, so this is for uh, Caesar vinyl only. So if you're using, if you have the Craft Pro puff vinyl in your cart, that's not going to work. It has to be the Caesar Easy Puff vinyl. So Easy Puff only. Uh, let's see, let's see. Miss Phillips is asking, is this 100% polyester? No, this is a black 100% cotton t-shirt that we're using vinyl on today. That's a good thing about vinyl. Vinyl, you don't have to worry about your garment, uh, like the material. Uh, you could press it on most t-shirt materials. Almost all, I would say. And it's gonna look great. Love vinyl. By the way, this was cut on the new, I believe this was cut on the new Caesar Juliet vinyl cutter. So yeah, that's a cool one for you. Okay, let's see, let's see. Belinda Sprinkles asking, what blend of shirts is best? Me personally, I don't do blends. I do 100% cotton. That's just me. I know a lot of people out there do great with their 50-50 shirts or 60-40. Um, but me, I love 100% cotton shirts. My customers, which I think has a lot to do with it, my customers love 100% cotton shirts. So that's why me personally, again, your pal Jared over here, I exclusively use 100% cotton unless demanded by a customer. And when I say demanded, I mean it. I will try my best to negotiate, get my customers in 100% cotton, but I mean, if they demand it, whatever. I'll, I'll do it, reluctantly. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check and see. Uh, I'm gonna, we got about nine degrees left. I need my press to drop to 280. I'm at 289 right now. As soon as we get to temperature, I'm gonna press that puff. Then we're gonna have our giveaway and uh, gonna be awesome. So yeah, so let's, Let's see if we got any questions here. There we go. Janice is asking, can you talk about the difference between brick and puff? Yes, that's a great question. So Caesar brick, this is a thick textured vinyl, but it is a flat lay vinyl. In fact, you'd have to kind of, if you want to see the difference, um, you have to kind of look really close. Now what it does have is it does have a textured feel. So just in running my hand over this, I don't feel much on this right here because this is just regular Easy Weed vinyl, um, but I do 100% feel it. I could for sure feel this right here. Now, it doesn't look like much on camera. I guarantee you're gonna feel and even see the difference if you're close enough, but yeah. So this is really cool. Brick vinyl is one of those things that like it adds a lot of value to whoever's wearing it. The person wearing this is gonna love it, and sometimes that's what really matters. Like no one sees your underwear, right? But like you feel good when you have like your lucky, your, you know, your lucky pair on. It's kind of like brick, you know. Like no one's gonna have their face to your shirt. No one's gonna be touching the texture, but you know it's there, and you feel that extra value, and it makes you cherish the clothing more. It makes you appreciate the clothing more. And for you as the creator, it allows you to offer additional value to your customers. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I am, uh, here we go, 281, that's close enough in my book. Let me grab my puff, uh, let me grab my puff transfer. Oh, it's right here. I was like, where the heck did it go? Okay, so now, this is Caesar Easy Puff. When you first cut it, it's gonna look and feel very similar to Easy Weed Vinyl. Um, it's very thin, it's very flat. In fact, I don't feel anything puffy at all. This feels to me like a plain old vinyl. So make sure you keep your rolls uh, separated, make sure you know wh what is what. Um, if you don't know what's what, you can clip a little piece off and press it on like a rag and if it puffs, then you know what it is. Um, but yeah, make sure you keep track of what is what. Is what. It is on a like, more frosty matte carrier, so that's one ind indication that it's not easy weed. And then of course, as you're gonna see right now, um, 
Yeah, not easy. Week. So I'm going to manually center this. Now this is where things could potentially get a little hairy. Is that you have to have a good eye to center these things. If you don't, it's going to look dumb. Now what I like to do is I like to have, there we go, it's good enough. I like to have an actual picture of my graphic either on my phone or, or on printed on a piece of paper nearby just to remind myself like how everything's oriented, um, especially if I'm making multiples. I want, I'm going to want my love you to be equally distant from the checker section on all of them. I don't want some of the love to be down here. I don't want some of the love to be up here. So it really helps. Of course, another thing I could do is I could say, hey, I have one finger between the L, one finger between the Y. I mean, there's different ways to do it, but keep things uniformed. Okay. So I have 280 degrees on my heat press. So it's finally time for the puff demonstration. Yay, 280 degrees, 15 seconds, right? Do I have that? Yes, 280 degrees, 15 seconds. Now, one more thing that I am going to check is the peel temperature. I want to say it's going to be a hot peel as all puff vinyl is going to be a hot peel, but I'm going to, I'm literally pulling out my phone right now uh, to check. Easy puff. Okay. I don't know why I don't have the Caesar app yet. I really, this is a plug for the Caesar app. Yeah. 10 seconds, peel carrier hot. The Caesar app actually says eight to 10 seconds. Oh no, but they have different white settings. Hold on. I'm gonna make sure this is puff, right? Easy puff. Yeah, eight to 10 seconds. Okay, so Caesar easy puff, I, I stand corrected, it's not 15, it is gonna be eight to 10 seconds. So let's just set our press to nine seconds, right? Split the difference. Medium firm pressure, here we go. Got nine seconds on the clock and it is a hot peel. Now, if you're not good at touching hot things, get some gloves. Gonna do that, and when they say hot, they mean hot. And oh, 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 there we go. And there we go, right before your very eyes, you see it just puff up. So as you peel it, that's when it kind of lifts and gets its nice, puffy quality. Now, what I should have done, what I was afraid to do, is I should have just held one end but then you see how my big arm blocks the camera so you can't see it. Actually, I should have just held here and peeled. Um, that's what I would recommend. And yeah, and now we're done. And that's, and by the way, that's it. That's how easy it is. So I'm gonna bring this back over to the camera, to the table, and let's show it off. We're gonna take some questions and then I have a giveaway for all you cool ladies and gentlemen. Now, just to recap here, just to recap here, these are the different vinyls. This is Caesar Easy Weed Regular in, I believe, bubblegum pink. We have Caesar Easy Puff in red. We have Caesar Brick 600 also in red. These are three different textures that we have going on here. This one is more flat, can't really feel it. The Puff, you definitely feel it because it's nice and thick and puffy. And then the Brick, it's thick and flat and has a rubbery texture to it. Moving over, this is more visual. This Strip Flock Pro has a nice satiny uh, texture to it, more satin type of velvety feel. Now this is electric, this feels like the regular vinyl, but this has a more metallic look to it. So this is really cool. Actually, let's display both right now. So we have front and back going on. This back is the hoodie that was already pressed before we came live, and then this front is the front isn't that dope and this is an example because there's so many different vinyls and uh, uncommon colors or colors that i don't want to keep in stock all year long this is something that i would for sure pre-sale okay i think it's time to give some stuff away who's ready for a giveaway me, me, me. Oh, okay, yeah, I heard you guys, yeah. Let's give some stuff away. So, uh, today we're gonna be giving away two Caesar HTV variety packs, a $50 value, um, 
and we're gonna have one winner on Facebook and one winner on YouTube. So no matter where you're tuning in from, you can join. Here's how you do it. If you're watching right now, you ready? Super difficult, all right? This is the hardest entry we've ever had. To enter, comment the word, hashtag Caesar. And by the way, that's Caesar spelled S-I-S-E-R. It's kind of like sister, but with no T. Now it's very important that you use the hashtag or the pound sign. Um, it's also very important that you spell Caesar correctly because we use a computer to gather up, we use a computer program to gather up all of the uh, hashtags that get commented in, in a certain time frame, and it'll randomly select a winner. Um, so no more fast fingers, no more trivia questions. Just comment hashtag Caesar. We're gonna give you guys about a minute. We want everybody's entries in so we can have as much any as much entries as possible. And then uh, that way the computer can, just, it's just gonna automatically pick. Uh, I do believe you can comment, no. Can they comment multiple times? No, yes, no, no. Okay, it's just gonna pull one per user. Um, so I mean, if you do comment multiple times, it's only gonna count as one, it's one per user. Okie dokie, yeah, comment Caesar. I'm gonna let my clock run down. We're gonna give it about a minute or so. Uh, now I, shot my, I keep shooting myself in the foot with this because once all of your guys' Caesar comments come in, I can't scroll, pa scroll back to the questions. So I do have two points that I did wanna make about um, flash sales. These are things to consider. Uh, and you guys have about another like 30, uh, about 30 seconds to uh, comment the word Caesar. Then we're gonna have our program do its little blippity bloop thing. Uh, and then, yeah, there we go. Okay, so two things to consider. You wanna make the pre-order process simple and seamless. You wanna make sure that it's easy to understand, that it's complete, that your customers know what they're getting into. You don't want them to be deceived intentionally or accidentally. Everybody who pre-orders should be 100% aware that it's a pre-order and they're not gonna get their product for until a later date. The advantages though is that they're getting something exclusive, they're gonna be the first, and if you wanna throw in like a sticker or something like that, discount code to thank them, go for it. Um, and you wanna manage your expectations. You're gonna set up realistic expectations for your pre-order launch, and you're gonna be transparent about any potential challenges or delays. Now, one way you could manage that is if you're ordering a specialty color of like puff or whatever, you know, hopefully, it, it should be in stock, but like, um, what, was, what was I was gonna say? Oh, if it's gonna be something around like Mother's Day, you know, everything red and pink gets sold out pretty quick. That, that might be one thing you wanna pre-stock yourself on. Uh, you don't wanna get caught without any supply if you schedule your pre-order, your Mother's Day pre-order, too close to Mother's Day. Be realistic about it, make sure you have access to everything you need, and be prepared to pivot if your primary supplier does sell out, especially for seasonal things. That's it, all right, computer, do your computer bleepity bleep bloop thing. All right, our producer is pressing his magic button over there. Our computer is bleep bleep blooping right now. It's going bleep 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 bleep. And it's gonna be selecting our winner and computer whenever you're ready. Okay, we got our first one. Who is it we got? Yeah, uh, my eyesight is uh, Yanina Yancey Silk from Facebook. Thank you so much. That font is so small. <laughs> so Yanina Yancey Silk, uh, thank you so much. You are our winner from Facebook and computer, I think we're ready to find out who won from Caesar. Beep, bloop, 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 bloop. He's, he's generating the program. It's, it's scanning through all of our comments with the, with the hashtag Caesar on YouTube, and it's gonna pull one at random, and we have Tina McLean commenting hashtag Caesar. Yes, Tina McLean, thank you so much. So Tina and uh, both, per, both winners, I should say, one from Facebook, one from YouTube. Do me a favor, you guys. Uh-oh. Uh, email us at winner at heatpressnation.com to claim your prize. Once again, that is winner at heatpressnation.com to claim your prize. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode. Today, we got in depth about pre-sale and how you could use it to your advantage as a creator. If you guys have any cool comments or anything like that, drop it below. I'd love to get your feedback. Be sure you follow us at Heat Press Nation. We got really cool stuff coming on our Instagram, on our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, and then we also have a new, a new phone number. New phone. Who dis? Text the word HEAT to 31592. Once again, text the word HEAT to 31592. If you didn't win this week, there's always a chance to win next week. Our live streams are back in bloom, and we have lots of cool content coming your way. So I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Adios, everyone.